Now we are ready to get started with our sample. So we're actually gonna start sewing now. Let's take one of our first muslin squares or fabric squares and we're gonna start with a very simple forward stitch. I'm gonna make sure that my thread is situated at the back, no tangles, all ready to go. And we're gonna start with, just like we set um, before, width at zero because we're just straight stitching and length at 2.5 or three. So we're going to lower the presser foot and just begin. Oops, that can happen sometimes if there aren't enough, if there isn't enough of a thread tail, when the needle goes up, it might suck the thread back through. So we just have to re-thread really quickly, no problem. And just hold on to that tail as we get started. Nice and simple, nice and slow. we go nothing to it next back stitch the back stitch is used for uh, locking our stitches mainly um, so we're gonna do a couple of back stitches at the beginning of the stitch and a couple of back stitches at the end to lock it out for me my back stitch is an arrow right up here that looks like it's turning around many machines will have a back stitch option right here next to the needle because your hands are already here and it's easier to reach up here but many machines also have a, a physical bu button or lever to push over on this side industrial machines do as well all right let's take a look there we go so you can see exactly where I back stitched to lock those stitches in place all right Next is our zigzag stitch. Our zigzag stitch can be used for a lot of things. It can be used to sew elastic. It can be used to sew many stretch fabrics. It can be used even to hem. Um, or it can be used to uh, create a stronger stitch. Um, lots of different options and a very common one. So again, for me, that's the fourth button over. And now I want to make sure that I'm setting the width and the length where I want it to be and the symbols up here correspond to the symbols where I would push the button on the machine and so 3.5 is a nice size zigzag mine goes all the way up to 7 and then a 1.4 stitch is the recommended setting so I'm gonna leave it there for now and then I can see that the stitch is set to a zigzag so let's get started we're always going to lower that presser foot never forget and then get started now it's not as necessary to back stitch with a zigzag because it's a much stronger stitch that's much harder to just come out unlike regular stitching which you can start to pull out if you tried zigzag is really going to stay put but we can always practice a little back stitch lift our presser foot and let's take a look beautiful that's a great stitch many many uses for that stitch and finally the last stitch we're going to use is a bar tack a bar tack can be used for uh, stitching on a pant or the top of a slit in a skirt or finishing off a zipper that needs to be cut short and the cool thing about the bar tack is that it's just a zigzag stitch but with a zero stitch length. So we're gonna move our stitch length all the way down to zero. And the reason we're gonna do that is because now we're stitching back and forth, but we're not going forward at all. And that's what's going to allow us to make a nice tack. So let's have a look. Lower our presser foot. Give it a few presses on the pedal. And there we are. And that stitch width can be set to the width of the zipper teeth 
that it needs to go over. This can also be used to very carefully sew on buttons as long as we're using the hand wheel and carefully measuring where the needle is going to hit. We don't want to just go for it because it'll snap the needle and the needle will come flying out at us. But if we use the hand wheel and look and see, okay, that's going to end there and that's going to land there and we can see that it's going to be able to jump the teeth or jump from hole to hole in a button, this is a great use for the tack as well.